one of the first experiments that a lot of us are introduced to surface tension is, is actually floating a paperclip on the surface. With these types of demonstrations, it's always mentioned that you want to gently place these, these objects on the bath. But we want to also define is what is that meant, what is meant quantitatively by, by gently. The research that I'm currently working on, we're interested in the interaction of hydrophobic particles with uh, water surface. If we introduce the hydrophobic bead just above the surface and we release it on the surface, as it impacts, it deforms the surface. And even if the bead is heavier than the surface, it won't necessarily penetrate through, but because of the surface tension effect, it can actually rebound completely off the surface. So rather than being captured or just sinking directly through the surface, we can have some, some rebound phenomena that, that occurs. And if we drop the sphere hard enough, if we impact with a high enough velocity, it'll actually penetrate completely through the surface and will ultimately sink to the bottom. So we're interested in this region where the surface tension prevents us from penetrating through the surface. One of the other things that uh, people have become interested in this type of work is water walking insects, for instance. Water walking insects they have hydrophobic legs which prevent them from penetrating through the or sinking through the surface. One of the observations recently is how they leap, they completely detach and leap off the surface. Uh, some researchers have built biomimetic robots that, that travel on interfaces that could be used for things like environmental monitoring and that sort of thing. The one thing we're trying to extend more broadly beyond this particular project is what's the kind of framework we can understand these dynamic uh, uh, interactions as well. And so we're starting with this, this relatively simple model system to build up our understanding and our intuition um, before more, moving to more complicated, uh, more complicated systems. Air tables are a porous plate where air seeps up from pressurised from underneath and you can float thin objects on it, typically thin discs. They're a great museum toy. And in this case, they were looking at textured surfaces where you can arrange for these floating objects to propel themselves in a particular direction. I just thought this was a cute experiment and I was going to try and explain a bit of it. And if you texture the air table, you find that the flow along the grooves of the texture drags the particles along and it drags it away from the arrow head. On the other hand, if this floating body has the herringbone textured surface on it, then some pressure forces win and they push it in the direction of the arrow. So there's the thing that hooked me on interest. <laughs> Why does it go one way in one case and the other way in the other case? The immediate explanation, naive explanation, is to say Newton's third law of reaction and reaction. And that's not quite right in fluid mechanics because there's a, a rocket effect. You can come to the great conclusion that the acceleration sideways is equal to the acceleration of gravity multiplied by the aspect ratio, the height of the groove divided by the length of the groove. Simple as that, except multiplied by a number between half and two thirds that depends on some harder mathematics calculation. Who cares about that? Have you ever noticed that little mist that happens when you tear an orange peel as you're, as you're prying the peel off? This little mist is generated by oil reservoirs about a millimeter or so in diameter that hold oil. And when those are broken or otherwise stressed, it, it will expel the fluid. So we have um, the spongy stuff that's compressing the fluid underneath the zest, and that creates pressure in these little oil gland reservoirs. And when the oil pressure exceeds the failure strength of the zest, fluid is ejected out. Fluid is ejected out of these oil gland reservoirs at about 10 meters per second on average, and the diameter of each one of these jets is about the diameter of a human hair. They're also very, very unstable. Um, they, they break up within about two millimeters of the orifice because the, the droplets in these sprays are so small, um, they evaporate very quickly. An animal uh, masticating on a citrus fruit, it's going to release these little, these little jets of citrus oil that are now um, carried as odor on the wind to attract other consumers to the, to the ripe fruit.